Today, we're going to talk about stuff or a service which will really help you to churn out renders 10 times faster. Now, often the times when it comes to any 3D artist, the majority of the bottleneck is about how do I get my renders much more faster. And not everyone can really afford, you know, RTX 4090 cards. When it was really launched, it was about $1,500, which is like out of the reach for many folks out right there. And even today, as you can see in this Amazon screen, it's really up to like $2,000. Just it really shows like how much demand is there and how the supply chain issue has been caused such price disruption. And NVIDIA is earning a lot of money out right there. But there's a service called RunPod, which really allows you to kind of have, you know, a, a host of GPUs for less than $1. Yes, you can get access to same hardware under just a $1 and that is really helpful for using or doing some blender renders out right there. So as you can see, it's really showing, you know, 74 cents an hour. And this is really like dirt cheap. Like, you know, it's, this is one of the very prime example that, you know, renting is much more cheaper than owning the stuff. And although RunPod really, the, the headline is really say that, you know, they are built for AI, which is obviously true. But the side benefit of that is that you can also use it to kind of, you know, host a blender and then churn out your blender renders out right there. So we'll just talk about exactly how it really works. A quick disclaimer that RunPod has indeed sponsored today's video, but it's really what I have really actually used it in my, like, you know, previous experiential video for like how Lightbulb invented quantum physics, where I kind of really have gone through all the 3D renders, as you can see up right here. One is light bulb, the camera is going up right here. One is like the hitting block on the anvil. And there are many more of that stuff. And my laptop happens to be just about, you know, RTX. It's not RTX, it's about MX130, which is really, really slower than, you know, something like 1650 Ti or something like that. So naturally, you know, I just cannot churn out render much faster. So, and I don't want to fry my CPU and the graphics card. So RunPod was a really like boon to my stuff. And it's not, I'm just saying, you know, just because they have sponsored it. It's really that they have really helpful it. And I really approached them that, hey, uh, this service has immensely benefited me. I really want to share it, the knowledge with the whole world. Would you be interested in sponsoring today's video? And fortunately, they said yes. And that is exactly what we are going to do today. Like, how can you just supercharge your rendering times to really make you much more productive? So first of all, what you need to do is you need to sign up. You will be signed up with the traditional Google login. So normally I have already done that. So it's like it's already done, already there. So and one thing that you have to really notice is that it really kind of hosts a similar Jupyter uh, notebook. So what it really means that all the steps right here is very similar to my, you might have seen like, let's say, Google Collab Blender, right? So where you really upload a, let's say, you know, uh, Jupyter Notebook script and make it render. So when Google really launched this collab, it was really fast because they wanted to attract a lot of users. But right now, all the GPUs are very sluggish. Even my laptop is a bit faster than the Google collab, which really goes to show that, you know, you have to pay for like upfront $30, $40. And like, it's, you have to really upgrade for higher tier in that stuff. Even like, you know, I tried to like, let's say, go for AWS. You know, you can have a, because I know software engineering a little bit. So I can really opt for that. But even like setting up, you know, CUDA on the graphics and let's say Windows server, it's like it's a massive headache. And like I also tried like Fox renders, all this stuff, but it was just not very, you know, polished UI. And like, and for some reason, the UI still looks like of like 2003, 2004. And even though my file format is correct, it just doesn't really work at all for me. So I really happened to found out, you know, front port and naturally, you know, I just kind of tweaked here and there, figured out how to really do it. And that's what we're going to share out to you. How fast RunPod is, uh, how can you access the RTX 49 for such a low price? And that's pretty much what we're going to do. So as you can see, there are a lot of tutorial on Google Colab, but there's no tutorial on how to use RunPod. So I hope that this really adds, you know, much more value to your, you know, 3D uh, rendering as a, as a value to you as a 3D artist, something like that. So it's like, okay, so first of all, as you can see, when you come to RunPod, first of all, you will see that your balance might be zero. Now, I've already $50 uh, uh, balance that I've really added. 
so what you have to do is first of all because every stuff is paid up right here you have to have a minimum balance of like ten dollars so what you need to do is if you press one no it will not work so what you do is you just pay 10 and just pay it with the card and it will take you to stripe but since head hey i don't really want it i just you know i'll just go back so what i'll do is i'll just kind of go back so you come back and hopefully when you do the, re the recharge or it's a top up then you can go with it run pod is generally a prepaid service that you have means that means you have to pay money up front but if you are paying, let's say, 100 to 100 or even 500 dollars, in that case, you can opt for postpaid payments if you request to the customer care uh, for customer care to run power up right there. So there are two kinds of cloud. One is secure cloud and one is community cloud. Now, one thing you might notice is that community cloud has much more GPU options than secure cloud. And you might really now question like, hey, there are a lot of gpu's card up right there which one should i choose and the answer is you should only choose rtx card which is like you know which is our under 40 series card up right there the reason why is because all of this card let's say nvidia h100 they have like massive vram which is not something that we need if you are using the ai workload in that case more than compute the memory is more crucial in that sense for rendering what you need is more compute not necessarily more ram unless you are really doing working on multiple you know pixar scale and all the stuff in that case the equation might change a little bit but since a lot of people are i'm assuming might be more indie developers who are just getting started maybe have to some blender donor tutorial or anything in that case this solution is perfect in that case so there really raises one question so now we are clear that which card should you choose whether you either you can go for let's say rtx 40 is because they have generally have higher cuda than their you know uh quadro cards and all the stuff up right there so there are two kinds of version one is community cloud and one is secure cloud but the main thing that you have to notice is that let's say the secure cloud has the pricing of 74 cents and this community cloud is you know 59 cents and if you go for like spot instance i'll explain spot is spot you can also really go for even further than that cost and this is the most expensive one i'm talking about if you go to community one you can get much cheaper up right here this is like you know 17 cents for every hour so you can go for like this one so the cheapest one i think you know uh, let's say if you come right down here so let's say you can just go for spot interest like this is about 15 cents which is like you can get to access 30 80 for like 15 cents that's insane it's just it's, it's good to show like how good the service is but the million dollar question right now is which one should you go for like should you go for a secure cloud or should you go for you know a uh, community cloud right there now what i really say is that you should always go for secure cloud and it's not because runport has sponsored me or to really say that thing it's generally my observation from like a lot of permutations and a lot of testing that i've done on this platform so what secure cloud really is that if you really come to write this page let's say run pod secure versus community and just press this link i'll give this link into the description so you can check them out right and also yeah i forgot to mention just a sign up link will be in the description so and also the pinned comment so make sure you go and check them out right here so okay this really let's say it really gives you the highlight like you know these are secure cloud is our trusted platform where what you get what you essentially get is like your uh, minimum latency reliable network faster speeds you know better storage performance better write performance and all this stuff in case of community cloud the it's it's very unreliable in the sense it's like the variabilities are really a lot of stuff in some cases what i found out is that i get speeds around you know uh, like half a gigabit in some cases like kilobits per second and even though in community cloud my renders are like finished at 12 seconds but somehow saving that takes another 12 seconds to do that it's a lot of chaos a lot of mess thing up right there so i hope that especially for community cloud uh run pod kind of standardizes some you know process to really help you to kind of access the their hardware at much more cheaper price than the secure cloud but as for the time of being recording secure cloud also performed twice as faster as compared to community cloud what that really means is that if you chose rtx 4090 on both the side 
the secure cloud performs twice as faster even though the cards are still the same but of course what i just showed that better storage better you know kind of allocation and the stuff that's there has been there so of course what you have to do is right now you come to the secure cloud you choose on deploy and there are two modes that you can really use there's spot instance and there's on demand on demand is basically you can just keep on running up to how many long that you really want as much as you really want uh perhaps if you have the balance in your account right that's pretty much obviously and of course and there's a spot instance up right here what that really means is that if you're really using if you want to just use for under half an hour you can pretty much define uh, you can just go for and use spot instances but run pod can just instantly kill the instance without giving you any warning so if you don't want that always go for on demand that's much better so i'll choose this one i'll start with my jupyter notebook and really let's say i'll just start deploying it will take few minutes and it should be ready right let me just close all this stuff like right? faq and we don't need this okay so okay it's been re getting ready so it's been cuda cuda image starting nginx and all this stuff so what i'll do is now uh yeah we'll open this okay it's ready up right here okay now normally i have used this extension called dark reader so if i really just close this this is what you will get at the starting so if you're like me who is into dark mode you just do this dark mode right here and there's if this is so small let me just oh you know do this zooming so that you guys can see it properly and now i'll just link a description to my github page where you can download the script and they can run it up right here so what you do is you can go to my github repo the link is in the description so let's say i'll do is my github page this is the link and what you need to do is if you go right here so again just copy this command first of all right and yeah so this is the command that you have to copy so first of all what you have to do is make sure that you are in this workspace right and what this command really means is that wget is basically trying to fetch the file which you are trying to get and this is the link of that file that we want to get to this thing so how do you get that now there is two way that you can give what you can do is you can just locally download this you know and let's say you can just press this download button and this will get you down and then what you can do is you can drag and drop this file right here so if that is more you know easy to understand for you uh if you really want if you don't want to download and directly just kind of do render do the run port kind of fetch the file for themselves what you can do is let me just delete this for now okay and what i need to do is so let's me just uh go to the main section copy this what i'll do is i'll just open this terminal so again make sure that i and also you are in this workspace folder i'll just control v and just right you know to fetch all this stuff now depending on which one is easy to understand i'm assuming that if you just want to kind of download the file and just drag and drop that would be much easier if you're not into this coding stuff this is much more uh, as an optional step to do right there so again so i'll just repeat it what you do is you come right here you press this one you what you do is you download it and then this drag and drop right here otherwise what you can do is you can let me just kind of go back copy this and directly import it in, into the console whichever one is easy you can go for that so again let me just open this right so it might look intimidating but trust me it's it's, it's very simple it's really not i mean it's a just cup of tea for everyone right there so it's like yeah so what to do is you run this and it will give you the information about all the instance up right here so it's 23.7 percentage available so okay this is nvidia smi which gives you information about your card so you can see power consumption is about 15 watt out of this whole lot of thing and then the main important thing that you have to kind of you know uh pay attention is to which version that you are using so 
ideally you should also you should only use the version which you are really rendering on the local pc so let's say on my pc currently right now i have the blender version 3.3 so and if i have really kind of you know uh made my blend files out of the 3.3 so it should also really just reflect this 3.3 version up right here but normally blender really just works in a way that if you're having some current or higher version it would really work properly there's no issue but to ensure maximum compatibility make sure that you really just kind of choose any appropriate blender render that you have chose so let's say uh let's say i just what i mentioned again it's like if i'm rendering my if i'm saving my blend file on blender 3.3 make sure that you choose blender 3.3 right here if you are on blender let's say you know 3. Uh, let's say 5 make sure that you choose let's say instead of blender 3. The 4.0 you choose 3.5 but normally you know blender would really accept the file for the latest version higher so make sure that you really go for the current or the higher latest version of right there so it's also really important that you really make sure that the uh say you choose a correct blender files otherwise if you files containing if your file are containing let's say geometry nodes from the latest blender version and you try to run it from let's say previous two or uh, it's blended 2.0 or something like that it would just not work so yeah and these are the like limited blender like options like 2.9 2.8 2.4 i keep on updating this thing if you want some custom uh let's say blender version upright here, let me just know in the comment box below i'll just update this script so you can just readily access it whenever you want in that case so i'll just keep on uh let's uh, keep this as to blender 4.0 and what i'll do is so it will just kind of go fetch this file and it will really like update all of this you know uh libraries which blender need like you know graphics library to really just kind of perform this rendering stuff right there and then what it'll really do is it will really again it's a software coding thing if you're interested you can pay attention or you can just skip this you know uh, five or ten seconds later so what it really does this trick like, you know this is a python script that it generates and then what it really does it's so it will kind of help blender to decide like you know which rendering engine should you choose should you go for gpu if it's, if it's available or if it's not available it will st simply stick to the uh the cpu as well right there so what you need to do is again and finally it will really just uh make the output folder where our blender output will be stored so again let me just press the continue button like okay as you can see the speeds are like oh it's just more than one gigabits that's amazing oh that's really really fast okay no it's uh, yeah it's close to one sorry it's looking wrong but anyways as you can see right now the file is unzipping so it's really like this is the unzip command that's really working and slowly it will just go on to to really update all the linux packages which i have mentioned previously so let us just finish itself and we'll just kind of see how what it really does so make sure you point out your cursor to this here otherwise you will just uh, lost otherwise if i just come right here it will just go down and down so best way to really avoid it is to press click this so that it will just stays in this position and also give you the tip that how can you uh, observe all this command much better as we go along with in this video let it wait okay it's downloading all the packages if you're not into coding this might look scary but trust me it's not it's very simple it's you know all this linux thing is very common to a lot of folks out right there so yeah so this is now done so what we need right now is a blend file so if i try to just kind of try to render this out you know this it will just kind of put an output that it it cannot read because there's no such file up right there so what we need to do is we need to find a file let's say you know sample blender files right what we'll do is we'll go right here so okay and then we need somewhat like hmm, what what's the thing right so let's say what we need to do which one should we choose go for which one has the least okay let's let's go for this one right here 2.8.1 right Okay, it seems like this could not be downloaded neatly. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of you know pick this one. 
it's kind of heavy a lot of details and all this stuff that will really help us to kind of gauge the performance so right so what i'll do is i'll just open this 3.1 blender splash so okay i'll just open this zip okay so now this is the file that i've opened let me just you know extract it to the download files yes that's what we really want and yeah so okay this is the file let me just open it's a new window so you all guys can see what i'm doing okay so this is the blender file just right here so again what i'll do is i'll just come back you know uh then again let me just open this okay three point splash and i'll just track and drop this file right here yes i really want to upload it so again now what you need to do is you just copy let me just bring this file right here okay what i'll do is i'll just one two just simply click click slowly i'll just copy this key paste and just just copy this again and control v exactly now remember all of these names are case sensitive so make sure that you really select appropriately if it's capital make sure it's capital if it's small make sure it's small so again if it's really uploading it's like, mm, soon we'll try to get that right so this is the one thing right um well, yeah so let's say we just try to run this frame one yeah it started okay read file it's reading okay and it started so as you can see it's the zero frame it's really like you know it's at the fifth frame so when you're starting from like first time it may take some time for like you know the denoise kerneling to really just uh takes play take its shape and form right so what we need to do is again it's like 400 it's really like okay this is the thing again oh it's done it's like okay 44 seconds let me just look at the output you know so again uh it's not really clear let me just save this you know what we'll do is i'll just download this image okay and i'll just bring this in the new tab so as you can see this is exactly how it is as you can there's a lot of details complexities and obviously 4090 is obviously much faster so again this is just a one way right how do i really approach it how do i really approach my project now a fair bit of disclaimer i'm not a blender connoisseur or blender guru but you know this is what i have really approached for my project and i just want to showcase you what are the range of complexity that is when you're dealing with the cloud render especially so again i really wanted to kind of you know highlight uh let's say my project let me just fetch this so yeah this is all of my 3d render uh, file which i have seen initially when the start of the beginning of the video and particularly i really wanted to kind of you know highlight this uh which is the you know anvil the block of iron sitting on an anvil and the camera is rotating around this stuff what are the best practices and it's not the best practice i would say what are the most appropriate setting that you should really choose when when you try to uh, upload a blend file to the let's say run pod so again this is pretty much a rendered view let me just kind of go through this as you can see it's common stuff uh it has already keyframes animation and a lot of stuff as you can see it's changing its color it's doing all the stuff and then eventually it's fading out right so if you go to the render tab make sure that it's exactly what you really wanted right because blender will by default uh, assume that this is what you want if you want from 10 to 40 make sure you specify that it's 10, it's 10 to 40 or you know let's say if you want to start from my like in my case it's about 1 to 704 you can choose frame rates what you really want and it's this is the let it leave all the settings to let's say default right there it's a file extension what you want is png you can choose exr and let's say all the thing right there so you can use png you can use e exr bmp and all the stuff right so that's all the thing right there and now make sure that you really save it properly right otherwise you might get an issue like you know missing dna block when you get that issue make sure you properly you know reopen that project into your blender 
save it properly and then re-import it back to your run pod instance. So what I'll do is I'll just, I don't really need to do anything right here. So I'll just control S, do it right here and just like, okay, refresh this again and let's say this is exactly nine thing that you want. Okay, make sure you go back to workspace because that's important. And you also, you upload all the files in workspace. Do not go beyond, let's say, back to home or anything above than that. So let's see. Okay, where, where's my file? Yeah. Uh, we don't want this. 3D renting. Yeah. Let's say, upload this file list right here. Okay, this file is too large. Yes, I want to upload it. And then now I want to do is I'll just close this. Okay, uh, what I'll do right now is I'll just clear the output of one cell. So first of all, what we'll do is we'll just try to render the first frame and then we'll try to move on to the next one right there. So, okay, this is really uploading because it's a large, huge file and takes a little bit of time. And with the magic of editing, it's completed. Uh, upload and the both the stuff right there. So let me just kind of, what, what we really want is, okay, let me open the file again so that I do this one. Okay, so control C and what we do is control V, right? So let's do the frame one. And let's start rendering it. Okay. It's really rendering much better. So if you're really familiar with Blender, you might recognize what this is like, you know, time remaining, all the stuff, which is really on the displayed on the top of the, uh, let's say, render tab up right there. So it's like, yeah, it's 18 seconds. Wow, well, let's let me just look at this. Okay. It's PNG, right? Yeah, it's PNG and it's JPEG and stuff, right? Let's say. So, again, as you can see, for 18 seconds, you get pretty realistic since it's my metal block is designed by me, so it's not realistic. Other than the floor and all of that stuff, let me just open this, you know, uh, copy shareable link. Let me just open this in new tab. Okay, let's try to reset. Okay, let me just kind of download this again. Okay, download it. And yeah, let's open this again. So as you can see, it's this is not bad for 18 seconds, right? And now, how do you really just go on to, you know, render multiple frames up right there? So, or entire animation, because that's more important, I guess. So let me just delete this. So we don't need it right now. We kind of go to clear all this stuff okay so let's say clear output of all the cell and what you do is right now there are two ways now this command does is really wonky it really doesn't work the reason why i've mentioned is because it was mentioned in the blender documentation that you can just use this sometimes this works sometimes it doesn't work so that is why i really mean and that is why i previously mentioned that make sure you uh specify the start and end point within the blend file itself do not depend on this so what you need to do is again you just kind of just erase this dash f1 which really denotes as free first frame that you have to render if you really want to render everything let's say that it's just specify dash a or even if you don't specify it will still work right so let me just kind of do all the thing right here okay so you have to specify it. That's just one thing. So let's say dash A and then start rendering it. Okay. So it's really started for the frame one. But you know, the problem is like, you know, hey, I always need to just kind of, you know, scroll down and down if I have like hundreds of like, how much will I scroll? And yes, you are absolutely right. So what you need to do in that case is you just stop this for a while and let me just clear this output. What you need to do is you just copy every of this command. Do not copy this exclamation mark. Just be cautious about it. Just be, you know, just copy the starting from this dot slash blender to dash a. Just open the next tab. Make sure you are in this, you know, workspace folder. Again, this workspace is important. Otherwise, if you open, let's say this again is right here. If you are in a, uh, let's say, output. Then you start and then what it'll do is it will just go into the output folder. 
So make sure what you do is you be in workspace folder and then again you just go to this command. Now my developer friends would might know that you should use a CD command but again I'm assuming that not every 3D artist would be aware of this you know uh, Linux terminal logic is up right there but so that that is why I just kind of simplified this process for you guys. So what you need to do right now is just paste this command up right here yeah and then let's say start rendering it so then what it will really do is it will just stick to the bottom you don't have to do anything and that's the to me that's a one of the best thing that you can really do script is for to really simplify the things if you want to go much more advanced just copy paste it into the terminal and, and this is the most superior view in my opinion up right there so it starts to render a second frame you know let me just go write this one and of course So this is the second frame is rendering no okay for like 20 seconds surrendering and this should really show up if i refresh it correctly yes you can exactly see it and of course there are a lot of stuff you can you can just download as much as you really want right there but i'm not going to do it what i'm going to do is I just control c for quit this is like 700 frames so now the important step is let's say if i just open it to just make sure if it's correct or not right uh, so if you really see say the first frame second frame yeah, there are subtle differences here and there so if you go to workspace if you come back to the script what you need to do is there are two ways you can do you can just either down, right down click very simple right download as an archive that's that will get you the job done right so this one is the thing but the problem with this approach is sometimes it's possible that you know especially in the community cloud where the network speeds are really wonky here and there so what you need to do is you need to zip the file properly so that you can get much more better speeds this is especially true in the community cloud right there if you choose to opt for that so what you need to do is just like you know i'll just uh, zip this play this Okay, you know, and this will create an another, let's say, Blender. Okay, let me just here yeah, Blender output file as zip. What you can do is you can just you know download this right here. Okay, so this is much more faster in that sense. Blender output. It's like slightly deflated. Uh, yeah, it's not as compressed as what uh, RunPod might have suggested you otherwise. And of course, what you can do is right now, if I really don't need to tell you how to unzip the file, but let me just show you, right? So go to right here, Blender output, and all these files are up right there. So you can just import the JPEG sequence into your Premiere Pro, maybe After Effects, and then then bring it back into the Premiere. The, li the list is, uh, the possibilities are infinite in that case. So there is also another way for for my advanced and tech savvy use out right there what you can really do is you can cloud sync your file and this is the fastest option up right there which i've tried up it's like you can get anywhere from more than you know 100 mbps speed which is the fastest in uploading term so and unfortunately there isn't a google drive upload link because this is catered to more you know software folks out right there but hey if anyone is listening from runpod i would please love to kind of you know add the google drive link option so that everyone could really just directly upload the uh what to say all the projects uh, into the google drive much faster so of course and then the last step is about how do you close the project right and to really do that what you need to do is so if you just need to stop it to really just kind of occur further charges if you're just done finishing all the thing what you can do is you can just stop it and you can save all the file temporarily so what you'll do is it will really charge for every uh, let's say 0.06r for every of this pod instance up right here so what it really means is that if you just kind of close it let's say there are almost 720 hours but i'll just for you know better appreciation i'll just install it for 750 so it will really do four dollars that's the credit we really ask you for every month if you just keep it really as it is right there so there are two ways what i can do is i'll just stop this part yes yeah 
and then if you just remain this as a monthly thing uh runpod will charge you around 4.5 dollar every month or so so to really avoid any further charges and if you are really sure that you don't want to use it what you need to do is you just terminate this so that um you don't really occur any charges and by doing this it will only also delete all the files up right there so make sure you really want to just kind of stop the instance or you really want to terminate the instance i hope the difference is much more clear in that sense and lastly here's the summary between the difference between the performance of using an rtx on secure versus community cloud as you can see on the secure the time is about 18.5 i mean we just round it off to 19 seconds and on the community cloud the uh, render time is about 41 seconds so as you can see even though you're paying double the amount of money in secure cloud you're also getting this double the performance so it's net and net equal so you should always go for secure cloud as it performs much better and gives you the consistency that community cloud just lacks so there you go this was our comprehensive demo on how can you use runpod as your next render form for your blender renders i hope that this demo has added any value i'll just make sure to really add the sign up link in the description in the pinned comment make sure that you really check out runpod and take advantage of it and make your life more productive if you have any question comments or queries even while you're trying to kind of you know use the runpod make sure you try to ask a customer representative they will really highly help you if you have any like, question on my script or let's say if you want additional more feature from me uh let me know the github link is the description so you can issue an issue or sorry create an issue you can add a pull request you can do a lot of stuff in that sense so i really await for your response and would love to know how it really helped you so with that said i thank you for watching this video stay connected stay subscribed and i see you next time bye